So let's get started checking out GitOps Run and how easy it is to adopt GitOps with this tool set. So I have a small repository here and I checked out a branch called my app and there's not much to this repository, just a bin folder with some YAML files that I've already created. And I have a kind cluster here, brand new with nothing on it. And so I'm going to go ahead and do GitOps beta run and I'm going to target a new folder called the app. You can target an existing folder. I'm going to add the flag no session. So I'm not doing this in a virtual cluster. We'll talk about that more advanced feature in a future video. So the first thing it's doing is it's checking to see Flux is installed. It notices that it isn't. And so now it's going and downloading it for me and installing it onto the cluster. And then once that's done, it's going to go ahead and check if the Weave GitOps dashboard is installed. And if it's not, it's going to ask me if I want to install it. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to type in a password for the default admin user that we ship with. You can always adopt OIDC after this but this is a great way to just get started quickly. It's gone ahead now and installed the dashboard too. And now what it's doing is it's setting up a live reconciliation loop between my local machine and the cluster. On top of that, it's also setting up port forwarding to the GitOps dashboard for me. And so now that everything is running, I could do localhost 9001, and we can see here that I have the Weave GitOps dashboard. And so I'm going to go ahead and log in with the password that I typed in during this onboarding process. And we could see here that I have a new folder called the app. And in here, it created a customization.yaml for me. And so I'm going to come up here to this config map that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and drag that into this folder. I'm going to go ahead and type in config.yaml. At this point, it's going to go ahead and reconcile with my dev customization set up by GitOps Run. And you can see here that it errored out and it says game demo not found. This is my favorite part about the feature. It's telling me live that there's an issue and saving me a lot of troubleshooting time. Now I can go ahead and fix it. So if I look here, it's got the game demo namespace and that has never been created. I have that in this namespace.yaml file. So I'll go ahead and drag that down and I am going to go ahead and include that as well. And so once again, it's watching and it detects that I made some changes and it went ahead and reconciled and updated. And now everything is green and you can see that I have both my config map and my namespace now in this customization. And then finally, we have this podinfo.yaml, which is a Git repository and customization flux objects, pointing to a classic podinfo service that we like to use here at Weaveworks. I'm even just gonna leave that in the folder that it's in. I'm going to do bin podinfo.yaml. Oops, let me actually put in the right path. And once again, it's reconciling and it's gone ahead and created both the podinfo git repository and podinfo customization. But realistically, let's not be lazy. And I'm going to go ahead and move that down into this folder as well. So you can see once again, that is updating and it has now reconciled and I have my customization. And if I drill in, you can see that it created my deployments, replica sets, pods. And so you can see with GitOps Run that you get this quick live feedback loop that's really nice. But we're not done yet. Once we stop running GitOps Run, it's first going to clean up everything that installed on the cluster, except for Flux. And then it's going to say, hey, wait a minute. We noticed we installed Flux for you. Would you like us to finish the bootstrapping process? And this makes it really easy for you to just adopt GitOps to the repository that you're working in. And if you're already using Flux and you've already done the bootstrapping process, this is bypassed entirely. This is just a quick way to get started. So here we could see, would you like to bootstrap your cluster into the GitOps mode? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And it's gone and pre-populated a lot of values for me. It's gone and checked the Git information within this particular folder and said, oh, this is already connected to a remote repository. So here's the username, here's the repository name. It automatically chose the branch I've checked out 
and I'm actually going to change this to dev. This is a personal account. It's a private false. The host name's already filled in, and now it's asking for my personal access token, and I'm going to paste that in here. And now I'm going to hit submit. And now it's going and completing the bootstrapping process for me. It's creating all the bootstrapping files in this Git repo, and it's adding the dashboard YAML and everything else. I'm just going to go ahead and commit the changes that I made here. But if I go ahead and check out dev, oops. And now if I go here and uh, check out dev properly and do git log, and here we're going to see that there are three commits with all the additional manifests that were created on our behalf. So this is really cool. It's done a lot of work. And now if we go into the VS Code project, we can clearly see all of these YAML files here. And you can see that I have a clusters folder now with my cluster and it's got Flux system, the app, which is named after this folder, which contains a Flux customization pointing to this folder. So those workloads are now applied to the cluster, as well as a Weave GitOps folder with the objects that add the GitOps dashboard. So I have a Helm repository and a Helm release. And if I come here to the GitOps toolkit, we can see that I have those workloads in my VS Code extension, and so that they're all live here now. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'm going to search for it because I can never remember it pull up that port forward command that was done automatically with GitOps run for the GitOps dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and trigger that. And now when I come back to localhost 9001 and hit enter, whoops, opened a new browser window. I now have everything up and running. So as you can see, GitOps run is an easy, low friction way to get started. And now this cluster is in GitOps mode. You can go ahead and use GitOps run again to continue to iterate and improve this cluster and add whatever workloads you see fit. In future demos, we're going to be making future videos that explores this tool set in new and various ways. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.